this morning? Yeah. All right, take your Bible this morning. Go to Galatians chapter 4. There's going to be a major adjustment made to our thought lives as we continually go out through this year and through the rest of our lives, basically. And, you know, we talk about the fire. The fire basically is to get your thought life changed. You have the fire on the inside of you, which is great. How many know that? But if you don't change your thought life, you're not going to make any changes. You've got to think differently than you're thinking right now. And you say, well, I've been in the church a long time. I'm thinking differently. Trust me, there's still a lot of thinking differently you need to do. Amen. Praise God. It's just the way it is with the kingdom of God. There's so many things that we don't understand and don't know in the spirit of God. Thank God. Don't give us everything in one day. How many of you are glad of that? Because yeah. we wouldn't get anything. I mean, even through, uh, you know, through school, you go through the first grade, second grade, third grade. You don't start in college as a five-year-old. So God raises us up and continues to give us the word. How many of you have read a scripture that you read a whole bunch of times and read it one day and say, my God, I can't believe it says that. Yeah. Well, what happened? You grew into a place now of understanding where you understand that scripture more now and better now. And in a year from now, it may mean more to you than it does even now when you got the super spiritual revelation that you just got, praise God, on the inside of you. So it's a growing process. How many know it never ends? How many know you have not arrived yet? Hallelujah. Good. All right. Galatians chapter 1, or Galatians chapter 4. I'm sorry. Look at verse 1. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a slave, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Now this is talking to Christians and to kingdom people who are born again. It says, now I say that the heir, how many of you are heir of the kingdom of God? You stepped in there when you got born again. Now you have an inheritance that belongs to you, but the heir, as long as he stays a child, differs nothing from a slave, though he be lord of what? All. So now what's he talking about? He's talking about our thought life, isn't he? You've got to come out of that, that religious mentality that was poured into you that you're a slave, you're a loser, you're a servant, you can't do nothing right, God barely even likes you, even cares about you, and you just continually try to do good things to please God and to make Him happy. Because what this does is leaves you as a child. And even though you're Lord of all and you have the ability to rule in your life, you'll never rule with that mentality. It can't be done. So he said, as long as you remain in that mentality and stay there, how many know in the church there's a lot of mentalities like that? Yeah. How many have been in a church that teaches that mentality? Well, you've got to come out of that mentality if you're going to go on with the kingdom of God and the things of God, especially if you're going to receive from the kingdom of God. Say receive. receive. Notice, you don't get from the kingdom of God. You receive. Because everything's already been Give. provided for you. It's already there. God's not going to get you something just because you were a good boy or a good girl. It's already available to us, and we are receiving from God by agreement with God and by the Spirit of God into our lives what belongs to us. But He's already given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. We've already already got all things. So come out of the religious mentality where you got to earn something from God, you got to beg God, you pray and plead with God, because all that stuff's already ours. You're just simply receiving. How many of you, when you got born again, just received salvation from God? And how many of you said, well, I did real good this week, so God's got to save me? Um, you know, he didn't save you anyway, even though you thought you did real good. You run into people out there and you say, how you doing spiritually? You know, you, how you doing in your relationship? And they say, well, I'm pretty confident. I've been a pretty good guy. I've been a pretty good guy. I made a few mistakes, but I've been a pretty good guy. How many know being a pretty good guy don't do you no good? No, it don't work that way. You're receiving what belongs to you, praise God. It's already been provided for you. And everything that you get, say everything. everything. Say, I mean everything. I mean everything. everything you get from the kingdom of God, you receive not based on anything that you do other than receive it. That's why you can have somebody who's running around who you know is not a very good guy and everything else, and they're moving to more of the power of the Holy Ghost than you are. Because you're trying to earn something from God, and they just simply read the Bible and believed it. Are you following me this morning? You've got to come out of that guilt and condemnation mentality, that servant and that slave mentality. Look at verse 4. Here's why. Because it says, But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we are sons, say, I'm a son. I'm a son. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son in our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, we are no more a slave, a servant, a no-good loser, but we are a son. And if a son, then an heir of God 
through Christ Jesus. Now another translation says this, which I really like. It says, now you have been made a son with full sonship, full citizen rights where everything belongs to you. Amen. I know I like that translation better. Yeah, you become a son and a daughter of God. And basically, if you want to really do it, we're all sons of God because mankind is just one species. Man is man. So anything you see in here that says man is also for the women because they're a wombed man. Are you following? Everybody wants to spread everybody out. It's not that way. God created one species of being that was man. But he made two different ones. He made male man and female man. But you're still a man. Good. Praise God. I'm glad we got that over with this morning. People want to argue. Now this tells me whether you're male or female, whether you're black or white, whether you came from the ghetto or dent, this sonship belongs to you as soon as you get in the kingdom of God. And God's inheritance belongs to you. People say, well, I've been born on the wrong side of the tracks. There is no wrong side of the tracks in the kingdom of God. I don't care if you're born on the tracks. <laughs> Everything has been provided for you, and when that train comes down, an angel will stop it for you to get on one side or the other of the tracks and get out of there. All these things provide. So don't use excuses. Well, my parents were poor. My parents were sick. Well, my parents were this way. It has nothing to do with your parents. You're you now, and you have your own relationship with God. So don't blame stuff on other people. Blame it on one person. The one who's looking in a mirror, then leaving and forgetting who they are and having to go back to the mirror again and again and again. So we want to make this change of who we are. We are sons and daughters of God. All right, go to Revelations chapter 1. All right, Revelations chapter 1, look at verse 5. It says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto whom that loved us, he washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and for ever. Now this scripture is very revealing because it told me the first time I read it that I'm here on the earth for more than just to go to heaven. See, that was my goal. I was taught, you're saved, now you're going to heaven. Hallelujah. And I was told everybody, are you saved and gone to heaven? And heaven was it. And heaven was my goal. And basically, till the time that I got born again, until I got to get to heaven, I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. But I did know when I died, I was going to heaven. I knew that heaven was going to be a place of victory. So I wanted to go to heaven because I like victory. It was a place of power. So I wanted to go to heaven, a place of power. But the only way I could get there was to die. And I didn't really feel like doing that much. <laughs> But that's what I was told. But notice, here it tells you something different than we were taught. Yes, how many of you are washed in the blood? But notice, you also have been made a king and made a priest unto God. So instantly when I got saved or I got born again or entered the kingdom of God, I was given the position, say position, position. of a king. I'm a king. What does a king do? He rules. So I started running into situations and circumstances that before I didn't know what to do about or just caved under and found out that a king shouldn't be under any circumstance. He should be above every circumstance and know how to deal with every circumstance. I mean, you know, there's not a king in the world right now who are afraid his bills won't be met. No, because he's a king. So I started changing my mentality, and I found out in this book called the Bible, there is an answer to everything you have a problem with in your life. It's already in here. Now, as a king, I've got to have the answer in order to rule. So I take the, take the Bible out of here. Whatever comes into my life, whether it's a friend problem, whether it's a marriage problem, whether it's a health problem, whether it's a finance, I get my information from the book, and I rule on that as a king. Amen. Money's getting tight. What are you going to do? Well, my God meets my needs according to all his riches and glory. Praise God. And I'm a king and I enforce that in my life and my family's life in the name of Jesus. Symptom comes on your body. Praise God. I'm a king and I rule over you sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, I've been healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I have trouble with a friend. I don't walk in offense. I don't walk in unforgiveness. So I'm going to pray for them right now. Praise God. Thank you, Father. And do you see what I mean? We have it. But what we want to do, we want to accept it as our problem. We've always had this problem. Then we go to other people who just reinforce the problem that we have. You know, I've always seen that on you. It's just what I need is a confirmation. See, because what are we doing? We're dabbling down here when we're supposed to be up here. We're supposed to be kings seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning over everything in your life. Whatever's messing you up right now shouldn't be messing you up because it has no business messing you up because you're a king and you have rulership over that thing. You're a king here on the earth realm. That's why you were put here was to rule and reign over all your situations and over your circumstances. And you can do it. And the best part of it, when you have kids, you have the ability to rule over anything dabbling with them. Amen. 
They come home from school, they're acting weird, cast that devil off of them that they picked up from the neighbor's kid. Uh -huh. yeah. When sickness and disease comes on, and well, uh, little Johnny's just sick again. And we're, no, we're a kingdom people, praise God. We take authority over that thing in the name of Jesus. We run it out of his life. Why? Because we've been made, say made. made. You've been made a king, praise God. You have kingly authority in your life. It belongs there. Now, I know to your brain this doesn't register real good this morning because you're still in loser mentality because people have drilled that into you and drilled it into you. They've compared you to Peter. They've compared you to everybody else rather than Jesus. Right, right. I wasn't made in the image and likeness of Peter right. or Job. <laughs> no. I was made in the image and likeness of Jesus. So I'm going to relate to how Jesus handles situations. Did you ever see Jesus say, oh, I can't do nothing about that, Father. Help me. This person's got leprosy and I don't want to go too close to him because it's highly contagious. And No, he operated as a king with authority here on the earth and he walked in victory and wondered why nobody else was. Yeah. Now you've got to be careful here. Because when you raise up in a kingdom mentality, it's easy to get critical of people who are not, which is most people you're going to run into. And most people aren't going to understand you. So the opportunity for you to be offended goes up. How you doing? Real good. I'm a king and a priest unto God. <laughs> what church are you from? That cult. TCVC. I know what I've heard that before. It's an absolute cult. No, you're just finally taking your place of where God puts you through the cross. I mean, I mean, we've got Christmas, hallelujah, Jesus born. We got Good Friday. We got Easter, hallelujah. We got Pentecost Sunday, but there's never a king and priest Sunday. And that's what all that stuff was done for. See, he was born to get to that point, but we don't get to the finale that you've been made a king. And, we should have a king and priest Sunday, maybe, I don't know, May, April or something, where everybody comes together and acknowledges that Jesus is raised, but now I'm a king and a priest because of what he did, but the church is afraid. <laughs> To even claim that kind of stuff. But the Bible talks about Jesus being the King of kings. and the Lord of. Lord. Well, who's the King and Lords he's over? Is it the pastors? Come on, the bishops? Who is it? No, it's every single person that entered the kingdom of God. Whether you know it or not, you have authority over things this morning. And the Bible says if you just have the faith of the size of a mustard. just a mustard seed, if you have that faith, you know what you're going to do? Start using your authority. I used my authority even before I knew it worked. And guess what? It worked. Yep. It was amazing. I did it in doubt and unbelief. But it doesn't change the fact that I'm a king. It doesn't take me out of my position. It takes me out of my thought life and where I am in doubt and unbelief. So we have basically given to us, and we're going to teach on it sooner or later, but you've been given something called the name of Jesus. Oh. My God, we just don't understand what that's all about. We just throw a tag on the end of every prayer and hope that God hears us because we mention Jesus' name. But in Jesus' name, you have become a substitute for Jesus here on the earth right now. And you carry the same power, the same authority that he does. The only thing is he's up there and he commissioned you to do it down here. But we don't know that. See, we want to pray to him and have him come back and do it and he not coming back until his enemies are made his footstool and then we get out of here anyway so it don't make any difference so that's our responsibility and that's why once again the God is in control message is a killer yeah. oh God's going to do something well all things work together I got ran over by a truck last week I lost my wife my kids ran away but all things work together for good no they don't how's that going to work together for good that's a scripture that goes on with you speaking in tongues actually come on I'm praying the will of God. Will all things work together? You pray the will of God, you're going to do pretty good. Praise God. So what do I do? But I don't put that everything that happens. Because what are you doing? You're succumbing to situations and circumstances. Well, I know we just ran out of money and they're going to repossess our house. But God's always working all things for good. I tell you, that's not good. That's garbage. Praise God. He already said he would provide all your needs, so you shouldn't be losing. Are you following what I'm saying? All this stuff is provided for us. We've got to get out of that, well, this always happened to me, and we're a loser. This always happened to me. I mean, I go online, and if something's wrong in my house anymore, you know what I do? I don't go to the Bible. I go to Google. It'll tell you to do anything. It's amazing. Your car light comes on where you're supposed to get it done, and you don't want to get it done yet, and it's bothering you. You just go to Google. It tells you to do bip, bip, bip. Off it goes. Praise God, just like that. So whenever we run into things, what do we do? We go to this word, and bip, 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 bip. And guess what happens? It goes away. Oh. Praise God. We're still walking in love and peace. They don't like me, but that doesn't matter. Praise God. They don't care about me. That doesn't matter because I walk in love. Praise God. And I love every single one of them with an unconditional love. And I'm walking in that arena every single day. And how many know God's word works? Yeah. Yeah. And when you believe that, you'll start doing it right. in the situations. You know, if you read Proverbs 4, it tells you how to deal with sickness and disease. Keep my word before your eyes, in your ears in your heart for they are medicine to those that find them in health to all their flesh but how many people go to the word when something hits their body nobody 
Nobody goes, why? They don't believe it works. Well, what do I do? I go to the Word. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, I'm not telling you you're never going to be attacked by a symptom. As long as you're here, you're going to be. The symptoms are going to hit your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Symptoms hit my life. I'm just going to share with you. Amen. I've gone that direction. I'm going to share with you. On Christmas Eve, we were at home. Everything was going good. Praise God. All at once about midnight, I felt bad. And I went to the bathroom. And basically, I got sick. So I came back to bed and I said, none of that crap in my house in the name of Jesus. I ain't putting up with that stuff. I'll tell you right now. I went back to bed. About 45 minutes later, I felt just as bad as I did. And I went back to the bathroom and I did it again. And now here come the thoughts. you got to be Santa Claus in six hours. How are you going to look with stuff all over your beard? <laughs> See? This stuff comes. You can't back out of it because you told everybody that you're going to be Santa Claus. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And everybody's going to say, well, what's wrong with Pastor? He pays his healing all the time. And there he is. And Santa Claus plenty of time. And, he, he. and I said, no. I'm staying there. And God all at once said, you know, there's a sin consciousness, but there's also a sickness consciousness. Yeah. So if the devil can get in your sin, in your consciousness as a sinner, you'll struggle with guilt yeah. and condemnation. But if he can get in there with sickness yeah. and see... The devil sort of knows when to attack because any other time I just would have shrugged it off and kept going. But since I had a, a engagement coming in the morning, he put pressure on me to... Are you following what I say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's when he comes. That's when he's talking to me. You're not going to do it tomorrow. Oh, forget about Santa Claus. And finally, you know, I just stood and said, no, I'm healed. Praise God. I'm healed consciousness. I see myself healed. That's who I am. I'm healed from the top of my... Because usually when something hits my body and I speak to it, it just goes. So number one, I, I was confused why it didn't go with and number two, I was under pressure to get over it uh, pretty quick because Santa Claus is coming to town, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> so I was making a list and I was checking it twice because I didn't want to be naughty or nice. I just wanted to get here and do it. Do you understand? So what I do, I had to... Be careful of my consciousness. How many know you, you can have a consciousness of being someone who's a victim, somebody who's an angry person, someone who's not very nice, someone who don't like people, someone, and that consciousness has got to be readjusted to God's consciousness who loves everybody, who never gets offended, who does this stuff, and as you change your consciousness and practice it, say practice it. Now how many know if you don't practice it, don't do any good, because then you don't do it, you say, boy, that was a good thought, I wish I'd have did that, but I didn't do that, and now I'm still in a mess, but next time I'm going to do it, and you probably won't. The more times you do it, it gets in your consciousness and you'll just react supernaturally, naturally to the issue. In other words, somebody will say, you stink. I don't like you as a pastor. I'll say, praise God. That's great. Glad to meet you. How you doing? Glory to God. And it'll just come, it'll come natural. Do you see? It, it don't rise up in you anymore. How many know your feelings and emotions? There's a battle there. Yes. Yeah, you want to go with your feelings and emotions, praise God. You had a right to be mad. And you have a right to be right every time. But see, that's all that feelings and emotion stuff. But as we practice this word as a king, as we rule over things in our life, it's simple. If it didn't come from God, it's not, I don't want it. That's right. Because God provided. Every good gift comes down from heaven. Not the bad gift. He's not beating you up so that you grow. He's not doing this. You can grow without being beat up. But how many you know if you get beat up, you also grow? Because yeah. a lot of people don't seek God until they're getting beat up. Yeah. And you'll also learn, I mean, if you go through a situation and find out what you should have did and you did the wrong thing, you won't do it again sometimes. So you can learn from that, but God's not wanting, God's not wanting you to put your hand on the burner and burn yourself to find out it's hot. He just wants you to read the word that says, Do not have put thy hand on thy burner, and thou will not get burnt. I don't believe that. <laughs> I mean, you know, you'll, you'll know it then. Yeah. Revelation will come just like that. See, so you can learn that way, but God doesn't want to have to put you through hell to get you in the kingdom of God. We simply want to study this word, and we want to learn that we are kings and we are priests. There's many people out there right now, and some of them are saved, probably some of them aren't, but who are addicted to different stuff. See, all these things are ruling over you. Alcohol ruled over my life for 30 years. I wasn't king, it was. Drugs will rule over you. Sex will rule over you. These things will rule over your life. And they have no right if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, it doesn't matter. You're in trouble. But if you're born again in the kingdom of God and been made a king, you can rule over those things. You don't have to say, I'm, an ad I'm addicted to this and I'm addicted to that. God's working on me. God's No, God's not working on you. He already worked on you if you're born again. He changed who you are on the inside. And when you change who you think you are, you'll become who you think you are. See, people are the way they are because they think that's the way they are. Hey, I'm a loser. Well, then you're always going to be a loser. But the Bible says, choose you this day, life or death. He didn't say, I'm going to give you life or death if you don't behave. No, it's our choice. Life or death, blessing or cursing. And then he even told us what to choose. 
We I didn't get many tests in school where they actually gave me the answer. <laughs> But he did. So I'm smart enough to choose the right answer. Come on now. That he gave me. And choose what he says. This is the way I'm going to operate. This is the way I'm going to do things according to the kingdom of God. And it'll start working out for you in your life. And a lot of things that you worried about. I mean, if you're in financial difficulties, just for goodness sakes, do what he tells you to do. See, not what he don't tell you to do. People all the time, well, I can't tithe because I ain't got that much money. I don't care if you make $4 a week, tithe 40 cents of it or something. You know what I mean? Get in the program with God because God knows what he's doing, praise God. And all at once the blessings of God, they will come and overtake you. Say overtake. Okay. I'd just be glad if they caught up with me. But if they're going to overtake me, I would take that too. They come in my life and they overtake me. Finances have overtaken me. Peace has overtaken me. Joy has overtaken me. Revelation has overtaken me. I could stand up here and talk from today until four weeks from now about the Bible because it's already all on the inside of me and revelation just keeps coming. See, it keeps coming. It's not a once every two weeks, oh my God, I got a revelation. No, every time I pick up the book, every time I'm doing something, there's revelation coming on the inside of me. And as you use that revelation, how many know you get more, whatever you? Amen. And a part of the things... <clears throat> Part of the reason why healing is so tough in the body of Christ is because nobody's giving it out. Yeah. Yep. What you sow, you... If you never sowed it, it's going to be a little harder to... So, you know, every chance I get, I want to pray for somebody. I want to give a book. I want to do something. I want to sow because I know I'm going to reap on the backside of it. And I want to help people get saved. I want to help people get delivered. I want to help people. And once again, that goes back to our authority. Your authority in your own life is important. How many of you know that? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you want to live in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost? But it's also for people around you then who don't know of that authority. And in the name of Jesus, I mean, you walk up to somebody who's sick or down and out. You know what Jesus wants to do for them. You don't want to say, well, they should have been smarter. Stupid people, they should be where they're at. No, he, he wants you to do something about it. He wants you to take the name, praise God, as his power of attorney and break that thing off of somebody's life. But the church talks about it sometimes, some do. They think about it. But the question is, how many people have you laid hands on in the last six months or in the last year? How many people have you said in the name of Jesus be healed? How many people have you done it? Or do you come to church and say, that's really good, Pastor. That was the greatest sermon I ever had. But that doesn't do any good because nobody's getting changed, you see. And these are ordinary things that, that belong to us. You're a citizen. It's part of your citizenship of the kingdom of God. That's a citizen benefit for you to set people free from the power of the devil. How I many you know the devil's already defeated? If you're fighting him, you're wasting your time. He's already on the mat. Just step on his neck and forget it, praise God. Come on now. I've been fighting the devil. Good luck. Have a good time. If Jesus didn't do it, then how are we going to take him out? See, we already had a hit man come. He took him out, praise God. He is squashed, praise God. So don't, don't give devil credit either all the time. Just walk in what God has told you as a king. You are a king and you are a priest. You can have a relationship with God that's close. He loves you. He's been reconciled to you. He wants to have a relationship with you more than you do him. He doesn't care if you messed up yesterday. Just repent and get over it and move on, for goodness sakes. He's not keeping track of how many times you messed up. See, I don't even know if God could do that, praise God, with all the people in the world. But there's change coming. There's a relationship for you with God that's a brotherly, fatherly relationship with Jesus and the Holy Ghost where, where God speaks to you and you speak to Him. It's nothing ooh, ooh, spiritual. It's just spiritual because you're a spirit being on the inside. So you're talking. It's just like when you're talking to somebody else. And sometimes when you run into somebody who needs something, they will draw on the anointing that you have. Yeah. They will ask you a question that you have no idea how to answer, but all at once you get a great answer and give it to them. And you can tell when you gave it, it solved their problem. And then you say, my God, that was good. I, I wish they'd tape that. But they didn't tape it. What happened? What was put in you, what you deposited in you, was needed for someone, and that anointing draws it out. And let me tell you right now, if it, they don't draw it out of you, don't bother. Yeah. Because you'll try to take that anointing and that power of God and use it against their will. Don't throw your pearls before. Amen. Because then when it don't work, guess what you're going to do? Uh, the devil's going to come and say, see, I told you. I told you you don't have no power. That's just for Pastor Tom. He's the only one who can heal and deliver. You can go there all you want, but you're never going to be able to do it because you're just an ordinary person out there. And you can't do nothing, praise God. That's just the way it is. And the devil will come and come and come and say, that's right, I can't do it. I prayed for two people and they died. Well, they were dying anyway. See? So you can't do that, but there's a draw. Say there's a draw. How many have ever felt that draw when you're talking to somebody doing something? It's there. How many of you didn't act on that draw then felt guilty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You only feel guilty when you didn't do something you should have did. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't feel guilty. Yeah. We, sometimes we don't act on it. Why? Number one, because we're fearful. And we're fearful because we don't know we're kings. And we've been commissioned just to do that. That's why you're here. I don't know. If you've got 30, 40, 50 years, 20 years left. That's what those 20 years are for you to do. Walk in the power of God and set the captives free. Bring them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. So that we multiply one right after the other. And this spreads through Fort Pierce. Spreads through Port St. Lucie. Spreads through this. I mean, the books are going everywhere, praise God. I'm so excited about it. We were over at, uh, we're watching the kids this weekend, and we pulled into a gas station, and there were four Brothers in Christ motorcycle people there. So we went in, got our stuff, came out. We came out. They were in the parking lot holding hands, praying. I thought, my God. I said, I'm going to give them a book. Becky says, what? I said, yeah, give them guys a book. Praise God. So I first let him pray. Yeah, well, she said let him pray. They were praying, and I didn't want him to interrupt them to give them his book. Yes, she's very considerate there. So I took a handful of books. So I took them over. Said, would you like a book? Oh, yeah. Oh, I pastor for Port St. Lucie. I wrote it about. So they took it. And they took three other ones to pass out on their motor. So our, so it's on motorcycles right now going around the world. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just sent a bunch of them up to, I think it's Massachusetts. She wanted a bunch of them up there to pass out to pastors and stuff. So we sent them out there. I mean, you know, we're going different places where we can't get to. That's right. And if you, if you know, if you look at the website or, or the and configure things out and whatever we're getting new new looks from people you know other people are starting to look at us and here and then they like us sometimes and sometimes they don't but how many know that's okay because we're getting the word out and that's what we want to do we want to spread we want to spread the, the spiritual authority and power disease that we have <laughs> To everybody we come close to to let them know there's a better lifestyle there's a better thing going on praise God so he put us in that position that's who you are this morning you are a king you are a king in the spiritual kingdom you rule over situations and circumstances you rule over a sickness a long time ago I started every day my days of sickness are over forever my days of sickness are over forever now here's the thing you cannot wait to walk in this stuff until you walk in this stuff how do I do it? I put it in my mouth because my mouth controls my whole, yes. my whole body and my whole being. So I had to declare I was anointed, yep. even when I didn't really think I was mm -hmm. anointed, but because the word said I was anointed. So it says, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Do you feel anything? Not a drop. Got a goose bump? About 10 years ago I had one, one time, praise God. I don't know. You know? But what was it? I put it in my mouth. And when you do that, this anointing on the inside of you, while you're in agreement, starts to go to work and changes your mentality and the way you operate. And you start walking in the victory. That's why you can talk yourself out of any addiction. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Thank God I don't smoke anymore. Praise God. It's so good to be free from nicotine. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you. It is so good. Not have to buy them things anymore. Praise God. And pretty soon you'll reach in your pack and say, I don't need this crap. That's right. You'll throw it off the side because the anointing of God will go to work on the inside of you and change your desires and change your things. Now notice it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit. How many ever tried? I'm never going to do this again. Did that for 30 years of drinking. That's it. I'm done drinking. I should have put till tonight, but I didn't. <laughs> At the time, I was serious. But when night came, I was right back. Because you cannot overcome this stuff with your will. You overcome it by agreement with the Word and the power of the Spirit of God on the inside of you, who then can go to work. How I many know only in agreement can he go to work? You can't claim to be a loser and him ever make you a winner. It's not going to happen because your words are very important to you. You know, it's like the guiding a horse or a ship or whatever it talks about there in James. So what do I want to do? I want to line myself up. So I start confessing I'm a king. I'm a priest. I'd go to my kids' room every day. E.W. Kenyon book. We are the righteousness of God. Praise God. We don't get sick anymore. We are healed from the top of my cut it out, Dad. And the whole power is so shut up, Dad. <laughs> but how many know I was a king in my I was a king in my house too. That's right. And I could read my book in any room I wanted to read my book. Because I paid for it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know they didn't like it, but that's beside the point. I was doing it for me, not for them, but it just sort of spilled over while they were there, praise God. Yeah, and all these things I started seeing what people told me in the Word of God of who I was, I started saying and who I was and then I became. Are you following me? I say I'm anointed. I'm the most anointed pastor. I'm the most anointed apostle. I'm going to start getting words. How many know I got one this morning? Yeah. I never get a word. I go to church and lift my hands and shake a little bit. I just never get a word from never, 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 never get a word from God. Just get it. How many know you never will? 
I don't care how the Holy Ghost moves on you, you probably won't. But all these things are already provided for you. Ted talked about the gifts of the Spirit. You don't have to get them. They're in you. Amen. Because the gift is in you. That's right. And he knows how to operate in all of them, I think. I don't know. I, haven't, I know he operates in a few, but there may be a couple. Yeah. And he knows when to use them, when not to use them, so they're already on the inside of you. So just thank God for the gifts of the Spirit that you have. Praise God. Every single... Thank God that I'm healed from the top of my head to the soul. My days of sickness are over. No more bad days in my life. Praise God. That's the way it's going to be. And you start doing that, praise God, because I mean, know that's God's will. Now, you can't say, I have four wives. I mean, no, that's not going to work. People get out there, well, you said I can have whatever I said. Not whatever. Whatever God will is in your life, you can have. So you can bring yourself out of sickness. I was sick all my life for the first 30 years. They were going to rip my tonsils out. Do this, do that, because I couldn't get over it. But when I found out I was healed, I decided not to tell everybody. Now, here's another thing. Boy, we're going on a trail this morning, aren't we? You can't talk about something of the devil all the time and get free of it. Right. You can't go around to everybody, I'm broke, I ain't got no money. We ain't got broke, we ain't acquired, I got enough money. We, I'll tell you what, you will never get out of it. You've got to believe what God tells you and make him your father. That's right. Because he is your father. And not only that, he knows. Yeah. He knows what you already need. Come on now. He already said that. I know what you need. So even if you don't pray it and just follow him and go after him, he's going to take care of you, praise God. Amen. Just like an ordinary father would take care of Glory. their child. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes we don't give him any credit at all. Praise but yeah, all these things are provided for each and every one of us. And as we move into kingship, say kingship. kingship. See, I'm a king and a priest. This is coming in my life. I know it's not from God. Then I'm going to either take authority over or find out what I need to counterdict it. And I'm going to go after that thing right now. Praise God in the name. I'm going to forgive everybody that I ever had an offense with. I'm not going to walk in forgiveness. Been there. No good. I'm going to walk in offense. And as a pastor, when I first started as a young pastor, let me tell you what, offense was very easy. Very easy. Now I'm numb. I got beaten, battered till I'm numb. No, it doesn't make any difference. Pull my arm off, I'll still preach. Praise God. Don't make any difference to me. You know? Stab me in the back, that's all right. You got to be in the front to be stabbed in the back. You can't be in the back. So, Yeah, yeah. And everybody wants to go to a higher place where you better get ready. That's right. Because you go there, somebody's going to like the way you do it, how you do it, if you do it, if you don't do it, this is the way I would do it. Pastor, this is the way I do it. I don't like that. Music's too long. Music's too loud. Music's too short. Music. You preach too long. You preach too long. You preach too long. Everybody's got an opinion. Say opinion. opinion. So you grow into ministry. Ministry. You don't just jump up there and take over all Africa in three days. Praise God. It doesn't work that much. You serve and you grow and you do things. And how many know, well, I was going to go here while we're gone. Everybody has a, a different calling. Yeah. How many know you're not all called to be here? Right. How many of you are glad you're not all called to be here? <laughs> I thought that'd get the biggest amen of the day, and it did. Praise God. Look at that. No, but you're called to something. So you're called to some place to, to minister, to be with people in this body, outside this church, to do things outside. This service don't end in the next few minutes. It's continued in the next few minutes to where you go today, where you eat, where you... I don't tell you you've got to beat somebody up and, and preach the gospel to them. I'm telling you, if you're aware of it, the Spirit of God will lead you and guide you in the right direction. We have people in this church that, that are intercessors. Now, I'm not called to be an intercessor. Praise God. But some people are. Colleen's an intercessor. I know she is. She intercedes. What does she do? She prays. What else she do? She prays. But what does she do after that? She prays. How many like to do that? <laughs> but if there's a calling on your life, see, it's easy. As long as that's what's called you to do and you can do it. I mean, you know, there's a lot of pastors out there who are struggling, flipping out, having affairs, doing everything else. It's not because... That God mad at them or anything else, so they're different. Maybe they're just not in the right calling. Do you see what I mean? Or maybe they started too soon. Right. You know, and it's the same way. We grow into these things. You learn these things. Everybody here's got something to do. We need people with hospitality. We need people when a new person comes in to welcome them and give them a hug. We need associate pastors who are here. And we've got two we got the best in the country right here, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you have your excitement? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah. There. Yeah. After all, I trained them up. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, but you I mean that position isn't easy too. They're taking a lot of buffer for me. They're taking a lot of stuff that comes in and out. They're taking stuff from me sometimes. <laughs> you know, but how many know it's for their good? And, and I'll tell you what, as long as you do anything for love, you can get away with anything. Amen. If you want to do something to show somebody how smart you are, you're going to get punched before it's over with, praise God. But you do something because you love somebody. Right. I can correct them because I love them and they know I love them and I'm correcting them out of loving them. Not, do you understand? It's got to do with love. I love people. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. Something happened to me. Something different happened. I never liked people. I never liked anybody, praise God. Nobody liked me. It was just working out good. But when God gets a hold of you, what happens? Starts to change your heart in there. Starts to change the way you think. Starts to do things. Pretty soon you love everybody. And pretty soon, you know, you're thinking about everybody. It's the change that God makes on the inside of each and every one of us. We got the sound booth back there. Them guys been back there a long time. How I many know they times they take a little guff here or there? Or maybe a correction from, not me, these other people to correct him back there. I love my sound, man. I'm keeping back there. But yeah, it's all part of it. Do you see what I mean? And, and if you're still going to be a baby, Christian, and, and you're not thinking about everything everybody else but you're thinking about you then you're going to get offended every five seconds something happens for God's sake because it's always there do you see it's there and another I gotta quit I gotta quit I gotta quit this is why again if you spend a lot of time on Facebook you've got a great opportunity to get offended because you post your little picture and so and so didn't like it and so and so didn't love it and I liked and loved their picture bless God and they didn't like and love mine even as a pastor well they share shared this pastor they share this pastor this pa never shared me one time praise God they, and they're in my church for God's sakes you mean they've been in here for 20 years and they don't even like me for God's sakes they've been suffering for Jesus this whole time no you get over that stuff and I don't spend sometimes I'll like whatever she sends me that tags me or bumps me or whatever and I share it and sometimes I don't even do that because I don't want to I don't want to spend time on there it's just a good way to get upset about you know something or other and you got to be careful too because if you go on there with a loser mentality looking for sympathy you'll get it an agreement with another 40 people and now you got a problem are you follow me because agreement works in both areas so print positive print good things print, print don't print about all your problems and struggles because you're just going to go deeper into them because people are how I many know people like to talk and I said, did you see what I saw on so-and-so's? I saw that too. I told Aunt Lucy that and told Uncle George and told everybody about it. I told it too. I just can't believe that. I'm going to call Aunt Judy because it, it goes that way. And you don't, you don't need any more resistance. If you've got a problem, find out where it is in the Word or go to somebody that knows how to deal with that problem and have them deal with that problem and pray, deal with it word-wise. Say word-wise. Don't deal with it in the natural. You can see the way things are going in the natural. Yep, they're headed in that direction because sin is ruling in this world and this world does not like sin and it's erupting. It's not global warming, it's global sinning. Yeah. Oh, come on. Right. Yeah. The, earth, the earth can't wait, the Bible says in Romans 8. Creation can't wait until the righteous finally rise up and be righteous again because you're even bothering the weeds out there, praise God, with what we're doing. <laughs> Bumblebees are mad, praise God. They want somebody to step into righteousness. Bring the pollen back to the flowers and all that stuff, praise God. Yeah, we affect creation, whether you believe it or not. It, it's that way. We do. You affect the whole nation between righteousness and unrighteousness. That's just the way it is, praise God. So as we're growing up in the things of God, we're going to grow, but we're going to do it by agreeing with the Word. How many agreeing with the Word? So whether you know it or not, you are healed this morning. Praise God. It's so good to be healed. How many know it's good to be healed? How many know it's good to be prosperous? Good to be so fine financially blessed, That's right. good to have no offense, yeah. not to be in any unforgiveness, yeah. have peace, praise God, yeah. love my father, yeah. he loves me, yeah. love my pastor, yeah. I had to put that in, I just put that in, just came to me, that was Holy Ghost for sure of us, <laughs> but we're going to that place, do you understand, we're going to be different than everybody else out there, we're going to be different than other churches, there are churches out there who are growing and going in a different direction, and there's churches who are there who are supposed to be raising up younger people how many even know that yeah. and that's fine because if the younger people come here how many know we're going to offend them in about two and a half minutes yeah. <laughs> and they're going to run back to something else this is a growing process you're growing into this stuff you need to check the words that you hear from the pulpit and make sure they're the right words there praise God hallelujah and you don't have to manipulate me in any way or form I know what's going on in your lives 
I know what you're trying to do. I know. God already told me. You can't fool me. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you better watch out. Because <laughs> I make a list. I throw it away, but I make it. I've got it for a little bit. <laughs> and some of you are called in here. You're teachers. We didn't see that on Wednesday night. I mean, Wednesday night has been marvelous, these people giving forth the Word of God. Praise God. I mean, they're coming from different ways. They've got their own personal experiences to do it. And praise God, you know, we've got quite a few to go through yet. And we want to do that. We want to give everybody an opportunity to release what's on the inside of them. Because if you're seeking God, how many know you're full of it? Right. And I mean good, I mean good things. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yep, they just turned me off again. Praise God. There I go. <laughs> I didn't mean you. <laughs> These people are full of it. Yeah, you're full of the Word, and God has been talking to you about something. And a lot of times what He's talking to you about happens to be what He's talking to other people about. And when you share it, they say, oh, that was just for me. And you're thinking, no, that was just for me. I just shared it with you. Because that's the way the Holy Ghost works. He works on the inside of us. And he, He's working on our minds and our thought life to take us up to that kingly mentality. So there's gifts in each and every one of you in here. And I just want to jerk them things out. If i got to take your head off and jerk them out, I'll put your head right back on. Because how many know your head's a problem 90% of the time? Yeah, there's gifts. So just flow in the gifts. Flow in the things. Know what to do. You see somebody in church, God speaks to you, tell them, give them a hug or give them a call or whatever. Do it. Praise God. That's fine. Hallelujah. Because that's who we are. We're kingdom people. And kingdom is not Sunday from 1030 to noon. Kingdom is the whole, whole day. Praise God. And yesterday, of course, we are Browns fans. And we had a great game yesterday. But, I mean, it was so good. You know, we were Ohio State people, too, and C.J. Stroud, of course, was a quarterback. And I'll tell you what, he, he made the statement that I thought was so good. He said, I play football, but it's just my, what did he say, podium for ministering and, and spreading the kingdom. I thought, wow, what a thought. My God, so, so football's great. You win some, you lose. But he's, and, and I'll tell you what, he's getting in front of the camera. And i tell you what, they don't want to interview him anymore. <laughs> Because the first thing he says is, I just want to give praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave me all this ability to do this stuff. And, uh, and every time they're gone. <laughs> 22 years old. Praise God. Yep. So he's got a podium for quite a while now. And how I many you know, if we're going to get to these things, we got to get in sports too, because they're on TV all the time. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it's another podium. So is it worth it? Yeah. I'm sort of glad they won. It got out to another how many millions of people. And if he wins again, it will again. But this is what we're here for, to get the gospel out, not to win the Super Bowl. By next year at this time, you won't remember who won the last one anyway. Praise God. It's the spiritual things that make a difference. Glory to God. The spiritual things. And you are a spirit. Praise God. You have a soul and you live in a physical body. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this morning. I just thank you for what you've done in me this morning. Everybody else here, Father, we thank you as we continue continue to go to a new level, level after level. Father, we thank you for revealing who we are on the inside. We, we don't want to leave anything to the cemetery. We want everything that you've given us to come out before that time, to be used that time, whether it's a song, a book, a, a ministry, whatever it is, Father. And we thank you for continuing to do your work in us by the Spirit of God. Spirit of God, continue to show us things that we cannot see with our natural eyes, but we see in the Spirit of God. And we thank you for what you're doing in this body and in our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right.